Hey, hey, guys and gals, ladies and germs, it's your friendly neighborhood Shiver Man here with another Star Wars review. Tales of the Jedi is a show that exists now, and I figured I might as well talk about it, because I got stuff to say. And for any of you who know me, you already basically know my standing on all the latest Star Wars stuff that's been coming out, so I won't really bother repeating myself on that front too much. Though I will say Andor has been pretty good so far, and I intend to do a full video on it once it's all over. Though probably not until I finish part two of the Kenobi video. <laughs> Lyle, turn on the TV! They hit the Pentagon! They hit the fucking Pentagon! <laughs> yes, there's quite a lot of Star Wars stuff happening right now to keep me plenty busy, which is something I really wasn't expecting to ever say again. After having my soul sucked from my body and fed to the almighty Glorbalorp by the Kenobi series, I had initially elected to never watch any new Star Wars thing ever again. I figured this franchise is pretty much beyond saving at this point, so there's no real reason to give a fuck. And to be honest, I still feel that way. By now, I basically just don't really care care about the new canon, I get my fair share of great Star Wars content from the mounds of EU books and comics that I've read, as well as those that I still have yet to dive into, and the old expanded universe from before the Disney buyout is so much better, and a lot more consistent in world building than Disney Star Wars. Continuity is just not a thing that exists in the new stuff anymore, so there's simply no reason for me to be invested any longer. At this point, I'm going into the new stuff and just taking it as is. If it's bad, then it's bad. Oh well. But if it's good, neat. Good for it. And then I move on. It's a peaceful life. It's lonely, I imagine. Star Wars. Died, yes. And the reason I decided to tell you guys all that, aside from so that you can better understand my mindset going into this series, is because I'm pretty sure this show contradicted two different canon books, which is something I've raised hell about in the past. The books in question are the Ahsoka novel, which I've never managed to finish reading because it's boring as all hell, and Dooku Jedi Lost, which I have read, but frankly didn't find very memorable, apparently, because I don't recall it well enough to know for certain if the show actually contradicted it, or if I'm just misremembering. The point is, whether it does or it doesn't, I simply don't care anymore. That's not to say that that's not still a flaw, but again, continuity is beyond broken at this point. So I'm just here to assess these stories as they are and as they work in tandem with the films, nothing else. So, with all that cynicism clearly established and out of the way, let's jump right on into it. Tales of the Jedi is an anthology series set during various points on the timeline, and as the name implies, it focuses on different Jedi and their stories therein. Or, I say that, but in actuality, the show really only focuses on two. Dave Filoni's oh-so-precious OC and Jedi Master Dooku. And right off the bat, this is one of the biggest problems I have with this show. There are only six episodes, and each of them are only around 15 to 18 minutes apiece. And the title and premise of this show imply that there will be multiple anthology stories telling the tales of several different Jedi from across all sorts of eras on the timeline. And there's a lot you can do with that. You could use familiar faces in new settings, sure, and I'm totally down for that, but you can also introduce us to new characters, take us to different places, explore new eras that haven't been very well developed, if they've even been explored at all in the new canon. We can see the foundation of the Jedi Order, stories about the Jedi in hiding during the Empire, Jedi during the Old Republic, the Hundred Year Darkness, post-sequel era. The possibilities are practically endless, but instead we focus on two Jedi who we've already met and know a lot about, and we only get a few stories for each of them that are extremely short and have very little to offer. And don't get me wrong, there were some episodes that were pretty intriguing, some that even had me absolutely enthralled in the story I was watching. Particularly the Dooku episodes, as I had expected going in. The fourth episode of this series is easily the best one, and I think if you had just given us this story but stretched it out a lot more and gave us nothing else, I would have been completely fine with that. There's a lot more I want to say about this episode in particular, but I'm going to save that for the spoiler section of this video. For those of you who haven't seen the show yet, you're just going to have to take me at my word when I say that episode 4 is the only one of this show that I actually consider to be great, and I'd rather that didn't get ruined for you. The thing I most like about the Dooku episodes are that they really start to flesh out his journey to the dark side as he slowly grows more and more disillusioned with the Jedi and the Republic as a whole, as well as starting to question his own place as a cog in this vast machine of corruption in a way that the prequels and the Clone Wars TV series never really managed to do. The films gave us small nuggets of this sort of thing, but they weren't really all that well developed 
developed, so I was particularly happy to see that here. But once again, the same problem remains. The episodes are too short. Every time I found myself invested in the story I was watching, we cut to credits and that was it. We're not getting any more of that. We're moving on. I really like seeing Dooku and Windu on a mission together. I like watching their ideologies and the way they each choose to go about doing their duties clash. Because realistically, they should. These two could not be more opposite from each other, and that's another thing that I feel like the prequels really could have fleshed out more, but they didn't. But we only get one short episode on that, and then we never get to see more. Just as I'm starting to care, the fun comes to an end. As far as the Ahsoka stuff goes, her first episode was... fine? I don't know. It was just a story about her being born, because Filoni really wants to make sure we see every single second of her life, and then her mom fights a giant cat. There really isn't that much to say about that one. Her second one was much better, and actually got me pretty emotional toward the end. This was easily her best episode. And her final episode was the finale, and it was pretty lackluster. But to really talk about this one, I'm gonna have to jump into spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want anything spoiled for you, skip to this time code to hear my closing thoughts. Three, two, one, Claude. This episode once again suffers from just not being long enough. We have her showing up at Padme's funeral so she can meet up with Bale and he can give her access to what will eventually bring her into the fold of the Rebellion, and then we time jump to some farm planet that she's working on and everything happens pretty fast. She saves someone with the Force, exposing herself even though she didn't really need to do that, and it ends up getting reported to the Empire, who dispatch an Inquisitor to go deal with her. First of all, I just gotta say that this Inquisitor has a really cool design, and I wish it had been saved for someone better than a fucking Inquisitor who gets killed after like three seconds, because that is such a waste. I would have liked to see this design used for like an ancient Sith Lord or something, but... Oh well. And then she calls Bail, gets the villagers off the planet, and joins the rebellion, I guess. Extremely rushed and pretty dissatisfying, I must say. But I would definitely say that this was the worst episode, and it wasn't really egregiously bad or anything. That's the one thing I can say about this show. It doesn't do nearly enough with its premise or the stories it's trying to tell. But none of the episodes are complete dog shit. At worst, they're mediocre, and at best, they're pretty decent with a shred of real potential beneath them that'll unfortunately never be fully realized. But before I end the spoiler section, I did want to talk about episode 4 a little more, because that's the only one that really impressed me. Which isn't to say that the episode was perfect, there were a few things that I thought were pretty dumb. Like the fact that Dooku just so happened to be organizing the creation of the clone army and the erasure of Kamino from the Jedi Archives at the exact same time that the Phantom Menace was taking place. That's not continuity breaking or anything, but it's a little bit of a coincidence, that's all. I guess that isn't really a flaw in the narrative or anything, but I always just kind of assumed that Dooku joining the Sith and manipulating sci -Fi DS to order the clones happened at least a few months after episode 1. If anything, it would make more sense if the final straw in pushing Dooku to leave the Jedi Order was the fact that Qui-Gon died while on a mission for the Republic, which would have fully solidified his beliefs that the Jedi and the Republic were more intertwined than they ever should have been. That's even what this episode seems to be implying, only he was actually already working for Sidious before that, so I don't know. Just kind of weird. But like I was saying earlier, the Dooku episodes do a decent job of fleshing out his beliefs that the Republic is corrupt and needs to be taken down. And if these episodes had more time to really develop that, it would have been a lot better, but I think we're given just enough to start to get the idea, at the very least. It's cool to see that, at least at this point, Dooku still feels remorse for the things he's doing and wishes it didn't have to be this way, but he doesn't see that he has any better alternatives. He definitely doesn't want to kill Yaddle, but he doesn't feel like he has any other choice. One thing I never loved about about the Clone Wars was how Dooku was reverted to basically a mustache twirling villain with no real development beyond that. Because like I said, the prequels didn't really do enough to explore Dooku as a character, but at least in those movies there was a small sliver of nuance that showcased that he isn't just some evil asshole who gets off on committing atrocities. But in the Clone Wars, that Dooku is completely gone. I think Tales of the Jedi Dooku is the best version of the character we've gotten in canon, and if I haven't already said it enough in this video, my biggest problem with it is just that I want to see more. Give me more of this. I'm kind of hoping this first season was just Lucasfilm animation dipping their toes in the water to see how we might react to a show like this before doing anything too experimental. And if that's the case, then let me just be the first to say that I'm intrigued and hoping for more episodes. As it stands now though, it's a neat little show that you can watch in like an hour and a half and you might even gain something from the experience. So I'm going to give this show a 5.5 out of 10. Not great, but 
Not bad either. You're honestly better off just watching Andor though. But thank you all a whole ton and a quarter for watching and I will see you at some point in the future. You'll never see me coming. Ciao!